Yes, there is this Mukokoten issue that cannot just go away yet. Yes, this is Senator Johnson Sakacha. He says, let those who are against the donations given by the Deputy President give alternative to the youth. Personally, I know what it means to have a border border or Mkokoten in Nairobi. That is what feeds many families in Nairobi. Before you criticize, what is your alternative? Indeed, Senator Sakaja, being a Senate of Nairobi, has seen it all. Yes, those are the Mkokotenis. You know, I walk down Nairobi streets and elsewhere, and I often see barefoot or perhaps in a pair of flip-flops or patapatas, as we know them in Kenya. These are Mkokoteni drivers ferrying a variety of cargo, water, sand, soil, limestone, cement, timber, steel, general building supplies, and hardware, fruit, vegetables, etc., etc. Yes, the cards can go where large vehicles can't, sometimes faster than a modern truck. What we are seeing, therefore, is Mkokoteni filling up the gaps. Mkokoteni pushing the economy. The cards themselves are made out of recycled material, including used car tires, and therefore, their waste management importance. As we build Mkokoteni, we are uh, dealing with waste management disposal. And therefore, Mkokoteni are a very, very important unit in our economy. I think there's no doubt about it. Yes, you can see here the Ireland envoy to Kenya, Vincent O'Neill, using the Mkokoteni writing an ox drone Mkokoteni to a Makweni school. Look, the road or the path to the school is impassable, and the Mkokoteni comes in handy. You can see them Mkokotenis. Yes, the history of Mkokotenis stretches far back to Kenya's pre-independence era, where the cards were being pulled by animals like donkeys and oxen. However, how the name Mkokoteni was coined is quite unclear. There are some scholars who say that the word koko stems from kokota, which means to drag in Swahili. But that's not my story. Of course, I have noticed that me kokoten are not limited to material cargo. Look, kokoteni is being used to ferry that coffee to the destination. No car would have passed here. Here is a sick person being taken to hospital on Mkokoteni. So Mkokoteni are important. Mkokoteni or Mkokoteni are doing a great job in our economy. Mkokoteni has sustained many hustlers, just like Senator Sakacha said. Listen to this one. Look, this is a lady. She lost her husband in a, in a road traffic, I mean, in a road accident. 
she decided to rent herself. She said she started with 50 shillings her journey. She used just bare hands to carry uh, tomatoes, you know, oranges. And then as the business picked, she found the hands were too uh, limiting. She bought a bucket, no. And then the business boomed. Then she went to a basin, a big basin. The business boomed and she went to a wheelbarrow. And after the wheelbarrow, she went to Mkokoten. Can we throw that trajectory from bare hands to a bucket, to a basin, to a wheelbarrow, to a Mkokoten? Why don't we continue that trajectory? That's the entrepreneurship in this Mkokoten. Why are we stopping at Mkokoten? And why are you perpetuating that stage? Of course, there are Mikokoten owners, and I'm calling them entrepreneurs, who own more than a hundred handcarts, which they hire out at a minimum of 50 Kenya shillings per trip or 200 Kenya shillings per day to handcart pullers. Now, these are the hustlers. And they make 20,000 plus a day or a minimum of 600,000 a month. So you see, the owners of Miko Kotedi, who are actual entrepreneurs, make that kill 600,000 per month. But the Miko Kotedi pullers themselves, those are the hustlers. So should we be focusing entirely on hustlers or should we be wanting to convert the hustlers into entrepreneurs because there's entrepreneurship in the Mkokoton sector. So should we be focusing on the hustlers and leave them in that stage or should we convert them into entrepreneurs? That is the question. Listen. The message I'm getting here is that the Mkokoten sector can be improved. We can convert hustlers into entrepreneurs. We should not perpetuate hustling. That is the challenge. But of course, Mikokoten have a dark side too. Look, motorists who dare stand on their way end up with the smashed side mirrors while pedestrians who hesitate to give way will be nothing a broken limb. Look at that car, smashed from behind. That Mikokoten had no brakes. Had Mkokoten is not motorized, it is still the state in which it was since it was introduced. And we are talking about colonial days. Why should we stick to that stage and perpetuate that stage? Look at that. That traffic jam that traffic snarl caused by Mikokoteni. I am not saying that it's only Mikokoteni that caused traffic jam. Now the traffic jam 
caused by some mikokteni on busy and main roads such as the thicker superhighway actually slowed down the economy if you consider the man hours lost. Granted, it is not only mikokteni that caused traffic jams, but I'm focusing on mikokteni for now. We can talk of other traffic uh, jam causes. Now, when there is lateness, lateness can be costly to the economy. A 70,000 earning government employee who works 8 hours a day for 22 days a month would earn about 5,000 or 4,500 per month for no work done because he was late, but the salary will come. Now multiply that with the total number of people coming late to work and you get how much the economy loses from lateness. Teachers who get to school late do not finish their syllabi, leading to examination failures, who swell up the number of Mkokoteni hustlers, thus creating a vicious circle of hustlers. And indeed, operating a Mkokoteni is not an easy way of earning a living. I captured this on the internet. It's in the public domain. So indeed, Ngokoten hustling is like a last resort. This is in the domain that Mukokten is a chore, a hard job to do. Why don't we make it easier? We're not eliminating Mukokten, but we're not going to perpetuate the hardship. Now, in this day and age, look at that. I look at Mkokten such as this one on Nairobi city streets and indeed elsewhere and I feel dismayed. A human being forced to pull such inhuman weight with his bare hands under a blazing sun? That is something only a hustler nation can ask a donkey to do in this day and age. Yet, we seem to be perpetuating it by giving out more of the same cocktail that were there many, many years ago. That we have allowed this to continue happening may mean that our brains, our imagination, and our compassion have failed us. Look at that. My heart bleeds for the operators and I'm concerned about the vexation cost by the cuts to other road users. What place does a hand-drawn cut have on a modern thicker superhighway? It slows down the traffic to a crowd wherever it goes, yet we want to dish out more of them to more people. I have noticed that Mkokoteni carry some of the lowest value goods and is pulled by among the lowest paid workers as it slows down all traffic and by an extension slows down the economy. We may think that accelerating the economy, but the truth is that it could be slowing down the economy in the state in which it is. Not the Mkokoten itself, but how the Mkokoten is as of now. You know, I struggle to see the entrepreneurial sense it makes to keep the Mkokoten of the 1950s to present day. It is not as if we don't have the technology with which to move on. Motorization of vehicles arrived many years ago. Why are we fixated on human muscle? Why must we perpetuate the situation? 
Sometimes I see multinational firms deliver customer goods via mkokoteni cuts. Do such firms take it as a cost-cutting initiative? It is to me unacceptable that we should treat human beings like beasts of burden. If it is well-intentioned and aims to create employment, then I see very little to embrace in jobs that force people to use the methods of centuries ago. I think it is time to say goodbye to the traditional Mkokten economy, not to perpetuate it. Yes, I can hear you asking, what would happen to all those cut pullers? No, 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 no. I have not said we eliminate them. I am saying we modernize, entrepreneurialize them. But if a large group of people cannot find anything better to do than pull loads like donkeys, then that is a huge failure in our education system. And I'm in that system. I'm a part of the education system. And it is also a huge failure in our political economic management. Indeed, we must move on. We must not perpetuate a situation that makes people work like donkeys. So, the entrepreneurial question. In the 1950s, we were carrying on our backs. In the 1960s, the Mkokotenis. 2010s, same Mkokoteni. 2020s, same Mkokoteni in the same state. And therefore, I'm posing that question. Can we move to motorized Mkokoteni? There was an attempt at National Youth Service to do that. And can we move further? Why have we stuck in this state for since 1950s? Lack of entrepreneurship? Indeed, like I've said, political management. We in the education sector, in the training sector, we have our colleges, we have our training institutions, we have our technical institutions. Yes, we must be entrepreneurial. I spotted this imagination of a millennial Mkokoteni. I spotted it again on the internet. My little big thing. Beasts of burden. There, the calling, look at that. Yes, like Senator Sakat will say, it's helping people, but in which way should we you know, this day and age, somebody's imagines that to be Amkokoden and comes up. Imagines dreams and said it my little big idea, millennial Mkokoteni with a motor and or means of cycling and there it is so don't misinterpret me i am not saying that mkokoteni should not be given but i'm saying should you continue assisting people into hard labor they are earning a living, yes, in which style. That is my concern. Have a hustlerpreneurial day, won't you? Can we convert hustlers to entrepreneurs? And that is hustlerpreneurial day, won't you? Thank you.